All right. We are broadcasting. And now the channel is live. So hello, everyone. And welcome to Adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I am Christiana Ellis, and I am the Dungeon Master. Uh, tonight, our players are uh, Paul Weimer playing Xenophon. Good evening, listeners, and seeing here, our adventure continues tonight, here. <laughs> Jason Banks as Axel. The noodles are never far away. <laughs> <laughs> Lieber Dett playing Flounce. I can't follow that up even if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> David Archambault playing Dianoc. Hello. And Nobilis Reed playing Kenthan. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, we are continuing our journey through the Radiant Citadel using the most recent uh, published module. And our uh, players, our adventurers last time uh, explored the night market, the Dinsing night market of Sub Kung Kao. Wait, no, shoot. I'm, I'm, I, I'm okay. Hang on. I'm going to say it right. Uh, <laughs> Sab Sung Ko. I could, I, you know, pronunciation guides come in handy. Sab Sung Ko. And, uh, discovered through uh, investigation that they uh, that there was a, a, a plot afoot uh, wherein a uh, fellow merchant was trying to restoke an old rivalry in order to drive down prices and potentially buy out one of his competitors. But uh, by winning at the market games, they gained enough renown to gain some information and evidence confronted the perpetrator and found a way uh, that all restitution could be made without anybody getting into too much trouble. The only question in my mind is which one of us is Scooby-Doo? <laughs> well, so I think we are going to pick up more or less where we left off, which is where you had just been uh, uh, rewarded for your efforts by uh, Kusa Zungun, the middle-aged cobalt woman owner of Zungun's Seafood, and uh, Lanme Tianmo, uh, the gnome proprietor of Tianmo's Noodle Bowls. And uh, you, you had been rewarded for that, and we were uh, going to uh, go off to Zungun's Seafood for uh, a, a special seafood meal there. And I think... We're going to montage this just a little bit, but if maybe we could get from each of you a brief physical description of your character and just a, a, a little moment of your time uh, enjoying this seafood meal here at the night market. Okay. Well, Ken, Kenthan is savoring every bite, but secretly... He is figuring out what spices were used in its preparation. <laughs> and what does Kantha uh, look Physical like? descriptions. Well. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's uh, he's a uh, human, uh, dark hair, swarthy complexion, um, uh, pretty ordinary looking guy, actually. Dianak? Okay, uh, Dianak is uh, a wood elf with brown hair, kind of golden on skin uh, and missing both middle fing uh, the middle fingers off of both hands and I uh, I uh, Dianoc is also in enjoying very much the, the seafood and uh, actually scribing some uh, scribing some new spells off of uh, onto some of my familiar I uh, new pieces to their dangling bracelet that you would recognize as coming from the prawns that we fought. Aha. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get new stuff for your bracelet from the things you kill. That makes sense. <laughs> Xenophon is a gray skin gets eye. So he's about 
five feet, six inches tall. Um, at one point he looks at, he has a lobster and he starts chanting at it before he breaks it open and eats it as if he was trying to communicate with it. It doesn't, the lobster does not talk back. <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say I suck? I just mm. <laughs> Okay, I think I think for Flounce, Flounce is a very small uh, golden bunny who has very short ears. She's uh, sitting up on top of a barrel uh, holding and poking at uh, what looks like green stringy things and kind of looking at the proprietess and looking back and say, are you sure this is vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> um, but she is a very fluffy bunny. Um, to be clear, bunny. a herringon, which is a bunny person, yes. not the animal. Yes. Uh, she is a, she is a, an anthropomorphic bunny um, with very short ears. She has a, uh, golden brown fur it, she act, i don't know if i've mentioned this before but she does have what look like tiger stripes in her fur um, no in the, the, the coloration there's just very slightly darker you can almost see it in the right light generally it blends into the rest of her fur but she is extremely fluffy nice and last but not least uh so Excel is basically the opposite of our fluffy flounce bunny friend because he is tall, slightly gaunt and sickish looking. Like he's, he stands without the ears about six three, but with the ears, it's an, about an even seven foot. Like he's, he's long. Um, also, you know, he's a, he's a herring gone as well. So you would think he'd be a vegetarian, but he's never really had seafood. So, him eating seafood is probably one of the most disgusting things you've ever seen because it's <laughs> all paws and teeth. Like he's like cracking them open. Like if you remember the scene in Venom when he bites through the, like the lobster, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically him with everything because he's never had it before, but he's like, this is really good. And he's like cracking them open and like eating the meat out of them. Like, and he's just all covered in like seafood juice. <laughs> he's matted down. Like it's very gross, but he's very happy. Like he's, he's, he's excited about this. <laughs> so every, uh, every so often, DNR just takes their wand and taps, uh, taps Axel with prestidigitation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kusa Zungun, the proprietor of this uh, this particular food stand, one of the the women who you helped uh, in your your previous ad uh, adventure here, uh, appreciates you all enjoying your food and uh, happens to comment. You know, it's a it's a shame that uh, well, I see that you enjoying the lobster and and uh, it is quite good if I do say so myself, but it just makes me think how I would love to have uh, have you try some of the uh, God's Breath crawfish, but I haven't been able to get out there for a new batch recently. You need it fresh, of course, and it's just so time-consuming to make it all the way to God's Breath and back. How far is it to God's Breath, good lady? Well, one trip on the, uh, on the, uh, on, on the, um, uh, on the Dingus, whose name I've forgotten. The, the Concord Gem. The of course. Concord Gem. Yes. One trip on the Con Concord Gem to the to the spire, and then one from there, because God's Breath is another place in the. Uh, yes, the exactly. Oh, you, you know, now that you mention it, I don't suppose you lot would like another job, would you? I I find myself currently at loose ends. So yes. Well, I'm always up for a journey. There's no time pressure on this going out necessarily, but the key is that the crawfish must be as fresh as possible when I am to serve them. So the there's not necessarily any due dates that I need you to return with them with them. But I would say once you have purchased fresh crawfish, I would like to have them returned that same day if possible. 
so, but uh, as this is an informal sort of proposition, I can at least give you a contact. Uh, there's a woman named Aunt Deli uh, out there in God's Breath in the town of Promise. And uh, she uh, does, manages a lot of these sorts of uh, uh, trades and contracts and that sort of thing. And I, uh, she's a dear friend, and I have enjoyed her company on past visits. However, as you can see, I've been so busy here lately. But if you go and find Aunt Deli and you tell her that I sent you, uh, she'll load you up with as much crawfish as you can carry. And again, there's not any time frame that's necessary before that. But once she gives you the crawfish, I'll need you to bring it back post haste. Understood. And uh, what do you say? Uh, I, I would uh, be very pleased to offer you, uh, let's say, uh, one gold per pound of returned crawfish, assuming it's fresh enough, of course. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, of course, uh, it's as you say, uh, you would just return to the, uh, I, you know, I can't even imagine how long it would be to try to travel over land, but via the Concord Gem, you just go back to the Citadel, catch the Jasper, the, uh, the Jasper colored Concord Gem to God's Breath, and it's about a mile to, uh, to promise from where it lands and uh, ask around and people will tell you where to find Aunt Deli. All right. So, in any case, uh, I I hope to hear from you soon, and thank you once again for everything you've done for me, and and for of course the Tyenmos, who, you know, also I I'm sure uh, appreciative. Indeed. So, it would appear I look at my companions. We've formed an adventuring company, at least on a temporary pro hoc basis. Sounds good. So right now it is, of course, late into the evening because you're at the late mark, the night market. You've been out for a while. It's late, and so um, we can, if you would all prefer, just imagine that you have. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you want to deal with finding a place to stay for the night, or if you want to just kind of say you all worked that out and decided on a time to rendezvous back at the citadel so that you could catch the concord gem to god's breath <laughs> sounds good to I'm, me. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm good no, with option that number two. all right so <laughs> we return then to the radiant citadel does the uh, does the working out also include a long rest oh yes yes I mean, because like like Kusa said, it's not like she needs the crawfish by a certain day. It's just that when she gets it, she needs it to be fresh. Right. Um, so uh, you uh, are returned to the Radiant Citadel itself, this strange floating city in the midst of the Astral Sea built around this titanic diamond uh, and surrounded by these swirling gray mists. But... You are at there at the passage of respite, uh, respite where the Concord gems dock, and there is the large yellowish orange uh, Concord gem ship, which is there to take you to the land of God's breath. Have have, have you all? Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, obviously, as players, you wouldn't necessarily know, but what do you think about your characters? Would any of your characters know anything in advance about God's Breath? Would you have tried to find anything out before going? I think I probably would have. Would have tried to find out something. Okay. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, all of this is new to, new to them. Sure, right. sure. I would like to talk to anybody I see who's just come from Jasper and okay. you know, hit them up and try to find out uh, what I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think what uh, you, you uh, will just say that you're, you're talking to someone who's getting off of the arriving Concord gem, and uh, they say, oh, well, you know, it's actually uh, an amazing time 
for you to uh, be traveling to God's breath because you're going to be landing near Promise and they're having the Awakening Festival just starting today, as a matter is, of fact. What is the Awakening Festival? Oh, know? well, it's so they are very big on uh, oral histories in, uh, in God's breath. And the Awakening Festival is uh, a time when people from all over travel to Promise, and it's basically sort of a big celebration where they share the stories that have happened to them, and the stories of uh, sufficient import get added to the Awakening song, which is just a long song that they all know in order to keep their history alive. An oral tradition of keeping history by increasing increasingly long song. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but okay. it's also when they uh, they meet to uh, have, you know, sort of more governmental functions to the extent that they have it there. It's not as organized as in some other places because it's mostly farms in God's breath. But, uh, uh, you know, Promise is their biggest town and this is the busiest time to go there. But, uh, you know, I was a little sorry to miss it myself, but uh, I've got other business to attend to. But, yes, I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much for your... For your help in this matter so to be well, sure hmm? oh yes I, well it sounds like i sounds like this is your i quite your scene Zen, Zenfon. i i am going to have to practice my mental disciplines in order to remember everything that we absorb there <laughs> So uh, one of the things that uh, we're, we're not going to have as many maps uh, and, and for, for this adventure. A lot of this is going to be more cinema of the theater of the mind, um, but uh, we will be uh, I just, you know, I, I, I trust that that's okay with you all. I'm just letting you yes. know. Uh, but yeah, so as you board the, the Jasper uh, Concord gem, you... Once again, feel this strange experience of this massive gemstone just floating through the mists of the astral sea, lifting, and then through some magical means, transporting itself to the material plane where it then once again lands and lets you out on uh, a, a, a fertile plain where you see in the distance lots of uh, uh, forests and you are actually quite near a coast. Uh, where you can see that there are a lot of islands out in the water uh, and you're not too far. You can just see into the distance uh, about a mile away is a, a town full of lots of uh, colorful buildings. And uh, you are pointed out by the other people because pretty much everyone getting off of the uh, Concord Gem with you is going to the same place. But uh, there are forests and fields surrounding it as well. And uh, so are, you're all heading into the town of Promise, I assume? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would like to point out that my character, that Kanthan, has purchased two collapsible leather buckets. Leather, leather buckets? buckets? Buckets. Mm -hmm. ah. For carrying crawfish, I guess? For carrying crawfish. He's going to. Uh, Good idea. Hang them on either once once he's got them full, he's going to hang them on either end of his halberd and uh, and carry them over his shoulders. Very good. Should be, should be able to carry a good ten or twenty pounds of a metal. <laughs> I've been doing a little research on how much how much a gallon of shrimp weighs. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, certainly, as you are making your way into Promise. Uh, you, you are seeing uh, paved streets. Uh, most of the buildings here are no more than two stories tall, but there are a lot of those. Uh, they're painted in bright colors, and, the play and it's very busy, and you certainly notice as soon as you are uh, anywhere nearby is that there is a lot of singing going on. In the town of Promise, the annual Awakening Festival is underway and the streets are alive with vibrant music. As the history of the land is recounted through song, musicians play instruments of many kinds. Their performances meld together as passerby join in during choruses, uniting the entire community in a single uh, collective celebration. And so, uh, are you just, I would imagine that... Uh, you, you know, 
are, are, are you going to explore a little bit first or are you just going straight to business? I'm going to explore because I'm also looking for a source of ice. Mm -hmm. Xenophon wants to hear this song and hear what they're singing. So he's oh, yeah. less interested in what the sights and more interested in the sound of what everybody's singing and playing mm -hmm. and trying to take that into his ears as much as he possibly can. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so I, I think as you're ex all exploring a little bit, there's uh, lots of stalls uh, set up, you know, as you might expect. It's almost a bit like the night market in that regard, except a lot of these look like they are not necessarily permanent fixtures, but they are set up specifically because there are so many people in town for the festival, uh, but lo lots of stalls selling local crafts, musical instruments, and street foods. Um, one of the things that you see uh, as a very common craft are these small straw dolls wearing colorful shirts and dresses, uh, widely available for five copper pieces each. But you discover that many of these stalls will also make uh, a doll to uh, resemble the, uh, the buyer. They, they will custom its little clothes and, and other little uh, miscellaneous bits to make it look like the person. Those are seven copper pieces. Well, I think Jay and I will, will get, a, uh, get one of those. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, they, uh, they assemble lots of, uh, uh, you know, little, little brown strips of fabric to resemble your your robes and then they put little uh little beads on to make it look a little bit like your ears there <laughs> <laughs> um so one of the things that uh you'll you'll notice just looking around in terms of uh the people here um so hang on um Sorry, I'm looking at the, the... so uh, mostly it's humans here in God's breath. It's not that there are no other races at all, but it's mostly humans by a pretty substantial uh, majority. And uh, the people of God's breath have skin tones ranging from the medium brown of copper to the near black of ebony. Most have tightly coiled dark brown hair. Um, and, uh, and they're mostly, uh, you, a lot of them are speaking a language that, uh, you are informed is God's tongue. However, almost everybody also speaks common. They are speaking God's tongue to each other, but they easily, uh, switch into common whenever necessary. Uh, and I think that there are a lot of things that, uh, certainly Xenophon and anyone else who is listening to some of the various verses of the song that you would be hearing in the streets are going to learn a lot of the land's history, uh, which include that, you know, generations ago, a land was plundered by enemies whose names are lost to time, and five gods came together to save as many of the land's beleaguered inhabitants as they could by taking them to a new home. Uh, those the gods saved named their new land God's Breath in, in honor of the deities who brought them across a vast sea to a new life. These inhabitants banded together to build strong communities and protected, protect themselves from danger. From one generation to the next, they share stories of their past, of the distant lands of their ancestors, and of the unfulfilled promise of reunion with ancestors left behind in a lost land. Um, and there's also, you know, like that's sort of like uh, that sort of history, but then there's also lots of like specific history that... Uh, uh, you get the feeling it doesn't feel quite like tall tales exactly because those would be sort of more overtly like obviously fictional like legends but nonetheless this feels a little bit there are a lot of examples that uh, you suspect are probably true stories but they are the notable true stories right mm -hmm. um, and then there's a, a lot of uh, uh, you you start to get some of the local geography terminology which is that uh, the islands nearby are the Nightwater Isles. Uh, you have, of course, Promise, which is the biggest city in God's Breath. Uh, and then there is uh, the Ribbon and the Rattle. The Ribbon is a broad uh, band of sort of dark red soil that stretches across the landscape. Um, here at Promise is the one place where the Ribbon 
kind of reaches the coast. Otherwise, it's a little bit more north of the coast. But it's this long stretch of land running from east to west where it has this uh, very, uh, uh, you know, dark red soil. And then that's known as the ribbon. And it has, for a very long time, been very fertile land. However, it has, in recent years, started to not be as fertile. And so even though the lands beyond the ribbon, known as the rattle, are more dangerous, like there's more, you know, uh, wild creatures and some monsters out there that make it a little bit more hazardous uh, to, to try to make a, build a farm out in the rattle, uh, the, the soil is good again there. So uh, people have found that like as their farms are starting to not do as well in the ribbon, some people are moving out to the rattle even though it's more dangerous. Um, and so you, you learn a bit more too about, uh, you know, the, the five gods are known as the covenant. Um, and then, uh, there are in town, uh, individuals known as the proclaimers of the covenant. And they're the ones who are sort of in charge of like officially adding new verses to the awakening song. You know, lots of people will do it kind of informally on their own, but as far as like when, when is a, a, an actual verse added for everybody, it's the proclaimers that decide that. Um, and they, they tend to travel through God's breath, listening to deeds and deciding what they think needs to go into the song and so on. And also just challenging people to live up to the covenant God's example. And you learn, certainly you, you, you find it very true that people are, take very seriously uh, these shared stories and that sharing stories in this way is just a big part of the culture here. I, Question. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Question I would go ahead. Question for a random passerby. So you have a story for the community as a whole. Do you have story? Do you have a song for your family? like that goes back and traces your family history the same way? Uh, the answer varies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's some times when, uh, you know, something is notable enough, it'll get added to the actual awakening song, which mm -hmm. some of the verses there are quite specific, talking about like specific individuals and that's, and families and everything. And it just tends to be whenever something seems of sufficient importance, but also everyone tells their own stories and their own local stories. And sometimes those are songs too. It's just that there is the one awakening song mm -hmm. that everybody learns and then everyone has their own as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess if you have other questions, we can, we can do those too, but, uh, um, without, uh, reading a bunch of verses of the awakening song, um, certainly anyone who has been listening carefully to it uh, can make history checks with advantage to remember details from it uh, later because it might come up. Might come up. There, yep. there is a name that uh, DNR would like to keep an ear out for. Okay. Uh, it's a Katalahutik, which is uh, the name of the place that they come from. At okay. least that's the term they use for it. Sure. Katalahutik? Oh, I get that reference. Well played, <laughs> David. Very nice. You uh, did you read a certain book? Or um, I I heard about it in a book, in a particular I, book. Yeah, I, I'm interested in archaeology. So for listeners, it's it's an archaeological reference. Go look it up. Okay, <laughs> move on. Uh, so in any case, though, uh, you you get the impression from the verses you do here that it does seem to be telling exclusively stories from this region. Um, but you can certainly be keeping an eye out. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, you, you see lots of people, um, you know, you know, an talking animatedly at, uh, street cafes, um, you know, buying things at the stalls, just enjoying the various, uh, sort of this party slash almost, uh, you know, in some places like little tiny parades and then just lots of music as previously mentioned. Uh, and then I think, uh, as you are kind of, uh, making your way through the crowd, um, uh, as part of the crowd begins another verse of the awakening song, uh, 
Uh Four people wearing the garb of farm folk wander into their midst, and rather than singing, they stare blankly. Then they surge forward into the celebrants, raising rusty farming implements. Uh, They are just carrying like sickles and uh, pitchforks and stuff, and they just, they start attacking people. Um, they are, and so I think, you, you know, as you're kind of becoming aware of this, this situation, people are screaming and fleeing in terror. Although one of the things that you notice as you try to get a little closer is that there is one woman in particular who is kind of trying to stand her ground at, at the same time of maintaining her distance a little bit. And she's saying, uh, uh Ada, Cullen, what are, what are you doing? This isn't like you, what's going on? And, uh, and I have a handout for you. This is, uh, I'm going to show to players. This is a handout called, uh, Enchanted Farmer's Attack. And, uh, if it'll load here, there we go. Uh, So showing on screen here. Uh, so this woman in the yellow dress is the woman I mentioned who, who is standing up, uh, you know, and, and calling out to them, but, uh, the they are not listening, and as you are kind of realizing, as looking a little closer, these four individuals seem to have uh, red clouding over their eyes, almost like their eyes are glistening with tears of blood. Mm. And so, that's happening. Oh. I'm, I'm going over there, I, and I am... Uh... I am. Uh, I, I'm not pulling out my weapons, but uh, no. I mean, I am... they, so to be clear, they are attacking people. Yeah, so... but I, I, I'm. I'm going to be. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to get, get punching them. <laughs> okay. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, but right. so we're going to roll initiative. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We're not going to stand for this. Do there yeah. seem to do be? We need, do we need a token to get into the turn order? Um. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me handle that. Uh, okay. Okay, just putting uh so we're doing this theater of the mind so don't worry about it from a battle map perspective right um but uh yeah and then let me get the uh, okay and then uh wow okay and okay uh we look looks like we've got doubles of a couple of people so um uh so uh can't then which is the right number for you right now my my number's 15. okay so it looks like these older ones were the doubles so okay so i all right well uh, hang on the dnr is the older one as well Okay, give, okay, just give me a second, everyone. All right, because this is... I don't know why it does this, but I'll fix it. Just don't worry about it. Um, okay, so... Um, what is Flounce versus uh, Axel's um, dexterity? Uh, d- uh, Flounce's dex is zero. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got a 16, so I'll, I'll do that. All right. Okay, and then uh, Dianok, what was your, what's your current correct initiative? I uh, can, but it's also uh, that's the old one. Oh, okay. I'm. Uh, tell me I'm what not... your right number is right now. That's what I'm asking. Ten. Okay, thanks. But that's from the previous thing, so it doesn't actually show up on our turn tracker. That's okay. <sighs> okay, so. Yeah. I, I'll tell you when it is okay. okay. Hang on. Oh, because your turn your token isn't on there for some reason. I dragged it on. Okay. Does everybody see their name on the turn tracker? And is the yes. number correct? Yes. yes. All right. So uh Xenophon, you are up first. 
All right, so let's let's um, do the. Do, I'm going to go up to the. I'm going to go uh, approach the nearest farmer that's uh, doing the attacking, and I'm mm-hmm. going to uh, vicious mockery at them. Okay. Um, hear my words, biting and true. Your skills are rusty too. Okay. So they got to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm just remembering. I, there's some neat. Let's see. Wisdom. Okay. They got a three. <laughs> All right. So they take three points of uh, psychic damage okay. and they get disadvantage on the next attack roll they make before the end of its next turn, which is part of the point. So they can't yeah. people. Right. So they, they sort of moan and put one hand to their head as they're still uh moving into attack and i think as you all are moving in um uh this this woman uh in in the yellow dress is is saying uh uh, please do help but but don't hurt them I, i know these people they're not in their right mind i don't know what's wrong don't kill them uh can't then your turn okay uh i'm going to uh go up to the nearest one and Try and hit them with an, un- an unarmed strike doing subdual non-lethal damage. Sure. 24 to hit. Okay. So uh, yeah, 24 is going to hit. Yeah. So that's four points of uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, so was that the same one or a different one from uh, the one? Uh, a different one, I think. Okay. I'm, I'm going to draw some aggro there. Okay. Uh, four, four damage, you said? Four damage, yeah. All right. <clears throat> These are if he, if they're not going down, they're tougher than your average farmer. Sure, uh, I mean they they are not down yet, but uh, okay. that does does hurt them. Okay. Um, they they are, they seem uh, certainly as you're getting close, you definitely see the 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 way their eyes look is seems very unnatural, and they seem to be uh, moving you know uh, erratically. Okay. Dianok, your turn. So Dianarch is going to, uh, going to flick one up and say, I uh, cushion and cast sleep. Oh, okay. That's effective. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Are you targeting any specific one of them first? I, uh, it goes from, uh, it goes in order. Okay, well, so we'll say that the area has all four of them, so it's we'll just uh, so yeah. go ahead and roll the number of hit points. Okay, let me make sure. Yeah, yeah. So it'll it'll start with whichever one has the lowest hit points. So, okay, seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, twenty-one. Wow. Okay. So to be sure, uh, you get all, all but one of these, these, um, farmers, uh, fall asleep. Uh, the, certainly the one that, uh, that Xenophon had mocked and the one that Canthan had punched, uh, their eyes kind of just roll up in their, uh, in their heads and they kind of, uh, sag to the ground. Uh, only one of them is left, uh, still awake and, uh, and slashing uh, at a, a fleeing um, uh, pedestrian with their pitchfork. Axel. Okay. All right, all right, Dianne, mm-hmm. right. They're only asleep, so don't, I uh, don't hurt them. They'll wake up. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, I will. This is not that. Um, I will use frostbite on the one that is attacking a fleeing pedestrian. Okay. They have to make a DC 13 con save. Okay. Uh, they got a 17. Well, then they are safe. Okay. Unfortunately, the, uh, they, the, the frost does not take hold of them. Uh, flounce. Okay, well, let's try something new. <laughs> um, she'll flick 
one for earrings. Mm -hmm. um, you notice that she's got a couple more, a uh, couple more deck. It's inscribed with a couple more things on it than it was when you left her last. Um, and she's going to invoke her stone rune, which means that any creature I see within 30 feet has to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, and if, uh, unless the save succeeds, the creature is charmed for one minute and is has a speed of zero and is incapacitated. Okay. So wisdom save, you said? Yeah, wisdom save, DC 12. Okay, yeah, they got a two. So uh, I think, uh, what does this look like? You, you flick your, your earring, but then uh, do, is there any other visu visible uh, effect mm -hmm. or do they just kind of turn and sort of stare at you and stop moving? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's just the earring flick, and then they just kind of descend into a, like a dreamy stupor. Yeah. And they're just sitting there swaying a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and they, you know, the pitchfork drops out of their hand, uh, and with three of them uh, asleep and the one uh, apparently disarmed, several other uh, bystanders uh, immediately, uh, like, move in to try to help just, like, secure them, like, to get the weapons away from them and then hold them still. Um, so I think we're, we're already out of initiative. <laughs> <laughs> you well, all got all one got turn. turn. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so as this, uh, um, uh, as this, this startling, uh, turn of events, uh, starts to, uh, come, you know, come down a little bit, there is a moment where y you're, uh, the, you know, all of these farmers, have been, um, you know, like they, like they they've had their hands tied, so and which I think probably does wake up the ones that were, you know, asleep, but they're now tied. And and in fact, actually, now that that's happening, now that that's happened, they're not even resisting; they're just kind of staring. But this woman uh, who who ch challenged them is trying to get through to them. She's like, Ada, can you hear me? What what is what's happened to you? And they're just not responding at all. Hmm. Uh, I think we might need a priest. Uh, or dispel magic. Yeah, I would like to that. go up to the uh, go up to that woman and say, uh, if you'll allow me, I I can uh, determine what type of magic they're under. If indeed this is a magic. Uh, she she says, "Oh, please be my guest. I mean, if you know what's going, if you can help find out what's going on, I I I'd really appreciate it. I, like these are these are friends of mine. I don't know what, what's happening." So, uh, Dean, I will. I would like to cast identify on them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what you determine with your identify, and it takes a moment. You have to, it's a full minute where you have to like place your hand on them. But as you are doing that, um, you uh, discover that what is happening is most similar to a uh, Geish spell. Um, they are being magically controlled by something. And it, you're, the spell doesn't tell you what it is, but it is clear that it is not merely a temporary charm effect. Something has, is, has controlling them, and it is powerful magic. Yes, this is more than just uh, simple dispel magic. Uh, we well, need to find out the source of this, I think. Even simple dispel magic, you might need to remember that you're all level three. You don't yeah. even have access <laughs> yeah. to that yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> but dispel still. magic isn't... Uh, dispel magic is a third level spell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. But yes, so regardless, it's more powerful than that, even. Um, but uh, yeah, so they, they, these individuals are just, you know, they're not speaking, uh, they're not attacking again, but uh, no one's willing to sort of keep, let them out of their restraints. Um, uh, but I, I think the woman uh, uh, turns to all of you and... Um, uh, 
uh, actually, okay. So she, before that happens, she looks down and uh, she notices that the this woman that she had been trying to, you know, uh, get through to is clutching something in, in her hand, the hand that didn't have uh, the sickle in it. And she kind of pries, pries it out of her hand and gasps as she looks at this small piece of parchment. And, um, and she just for a moment, she looks at it just kind of in disbelief. Uh, but then as she's looking back to all of you again, it's like, uh, uh, thank, thank you everyone for, for stepping in to help. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what, what would have happened. I'm sure a lot more people would have been hurt if, if you hadn't, uh, moved in so quickly. Thank you so much. Uh, my name's, uh, Delanor Godson, but everyone around here just calls me Aunt Dilly. Huh. Oh, you're, you're Aunt Dilly. We were, we were coming to find you. Oh, I, were you? <laughs> I mean, um, that's a, that's a happy coincidence, I guess. I'm glad you did. We, we're, we're here, we're here to, um, get some crawfish from you. At least that was our, that was our motivation for coming to God's breath. Oh, well, I mean, uh, I, I do, I do, uh, <laughs> manage those sorts of, uh, transactions, but, uh, if you, I, I, we, we, we have a situation here, good lady, that should be resolved before we talk about business of crawfish indeed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you... Oh, what, is that, what is that parchment that uh, your friend is holding? Uh, well, here, and she, she hands it over, and what it has is uh, it's, it's a sketch of... Um, hold on. Um, oh, okay. So it, it, it is a, uh, a charcoal sketch showing a child struggling to swim in dark water while being grasped at by hands beneath the surface It is a very mm. ominous sort of uh, picture, but she says, uh, he here's the thing that's really got me, uh, worried though is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot to explain, but this 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 sketch was drawn by my goddaughter Kiana. I I, I recognize I could recognize her style in a heartbeat, and and this is the kind of thing that she draws. I I, I I'm I'm I think I, if these people are being magically controlled and they're carrying around one of her drawings, like I I don't know if she's okay. Well, it definitely you know where deserves she looking into. Well, I mean, she she had uh, she had gone off and gotten uh, gotten herself a job in one of the farming packs out in the Rattle. I, I had expected her to come into town for uh, for the the festival, but I hadn't run into her yet. Uh, and, yeah, and now right. I don't know I don't know what to think. Do you know which farm she was going to? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I know just where it is. I mean, I, I, I haven't been out there myself. I just know the, you know, the area. There's a pact out there, and it's, you know, hers is one of those. Well, well if you can give should... us directions, we can go check up on her. And yes. Sure she's okay. Would you? Would Absolutely. you? Would. I, that would really set my mind at ease. I, you know, I and I, I can pay you. I mean, you know, I believe me, I, I understand the... Uh, you know, it's, it's not, I, I, I hope you all understand. You, you seem like you're not from around here. I, I hope you understand. I mean, it's, it's potentially dangerous in the, out in the rattle, but I, you, you look like you can handle yourself. So I wouldn't send you out otherwise, but, uh, I, I'd be uh, happy to, uh, offer you a hundred gold to, uh, undertake the mission and, uh, and another a hundred, if you can uh, bring her back safely. We'd be happy uh, to. If she doesn't want to come back but we but you know sorry i'm getting phone calls <laughs> um uh yeah go ahead she doesn't want to return but uh, is willing to write a letter or some such in order to provide proof that she's fine would that suffice well i mean i i guess but i she I, she was supposed to be coming here anyway so I don't know why she wouldn't want to, but I mean, I, I, I guess, but like, I'm, 
I'm a little worried right now that if there are people out there that are getting magically controlled, then I'm not sure I necessarily would trust that she would be uh, refusing to come out here when that was what she had said she wanted to do before. Were, were those four from the same farm or were they from somewhere else? Uh, I mean, they were from the same pact. With, you know, so pact, I don't know if you, you know, the a pact around here is that, you know, when people are, you know, out far away from town, uh, you get farmers that uh, sort of make their farms close together so they can kind of share resources as they need to. So okay. it, it, it's like a whole bunch of little small farms all together. Okay. Community, yes. Safety in numbers, especially in the rattle. That would, that, that would make some sense. It's true. Yeah. So um, how, long of a, how long of a travel is it to this, this pact? Oh, uh, it's it's about a uh, well. I I mean, it gets it's about half a day, I suppose. If you had like a like a wagon and cart, or a, uh, it'd be a little longer if you're on foot. That's not too bad. I think I think we should go check. I think out sooner this sooner is better than later. Let's let's yeah. get going. Yes, I would like to go and go and find out what's going on. Okay, well, I, I would appreciate it. I mean, is there anything else that I like? Any other questions that I can before you uh, before you head out? I mean, like I hate to send you out just not, not knowing anything. Well, but have you encountered this type of thing before? No, okay. no. I mean, I, you know, like Kiana's always uh, like ever since she was little. Like she's had a little bit of uh, she's had some darkness in her life. She's had to. Uh, you know, try to get over. I mean, like you saw that drawing, right? Like she, when she was real little, one of her best friends, uh, a boy named Cully, uh, uh, drowned while she was playing with him. Like they were out by Cradle Lace Lake, which some people say is haunted. And I, I you know, I wouldn't have necessarily given that too much um, credence, except that, you know, she says that she saw something drag her best friend under the water when she was just little and he drowned and so she's always had a lot of um sadness and guilt about that but she uses her drawing and you can see she's really talented even if it's sometimes ominous subject matter but she's been using that to kind of like process her feelings and i you know i was actually really proud of her going out to the pack like this like even though i miss her having her around here like it, it felt like one of the first times in a long time that she was kind of being willing to go out and into the world and doing things instead of just kind of being at home. Does your goddaughter have any known magical abilities or powers? I mean, not that I've ever seen. She certainly never told me about anything. I do begin to wonder. Um, but I, so, uh, have there been any, any reports of people going missing that you have heard i mean no but like like i said a lot of people were planning i mean people were planning to come into town we we don't like unless you go out to those far-flung packs like you don't really hear much from them until they come into town okay so if we can get directions and a description of your goddaughter we probably have um we probably have enough to be going on with mm -hmm. um there's actually a lot of other people talking about like what to do with these farmers too and you know other people mm -hmm. worrying about like what's going on because you know people overheard some of this about like magical control what's happening um so i think though that uh as you are um you know getting ready to kind of like have that conversation uh another woman uh uh walks up and let me give you uh, a handout for her, um, a, a broad shouldered woman wearing a multicolored dress that complements her dark skin. Um, this is handout lady Dre. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, she, she approaches and, uh, and she sizes you up from beneath a stylish hat and she just says, you know, I, I apologize for eavesdropping, but, you know, under the circumstances, I, I think a lot of people are interested to know what's going on. Uh, 
You, you see, uh, nothing important gets past Lady Dre, uh, but I hear you're heading out to the rattle to investigate all of this. Uh, and that's great. Excellent. I, I'll accompany you. Uh, uh, we should depart at, at, at once. We? Okay. Well, I, I, I have a wagon, if, if that'll help. If I don't know that'll if you help. had your own that, that would definitely already. help. Yes, thank that's you very much. Thing. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, so it's a plan then. I mean, my cart's not far. Do we want to just go now, or? The sooner the better, it seems to me. Indeed. As we're, as we're following her, I, 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 I would like to see, does she seem like she's uh, on the up and up? Yeah, uh, go ahead and make an insight check. Fourteen. Uh, with a fourteen, yeah, you get the impression that uh, like there's maybe her motivations here are not necessarily a hundred percent altruistic. So, yeah, she wants, she wants help, but it's not necessarily, you know, out of the good for her. Well, yeah, it, or, it might not be as simple as what she's saying, which is that it's just, let's go help see if people need help. Yeah. There might be more to it than that. You get the yeah. feeling that there is something slightly more to it than that, but do you ask okay. her about it or anything? Uh, you seem to have, uh, you know, perhaps a bit more motivation other than just helping people. Uh, may we know what that is? Ah, uh, well, uh, I, you you got me. Uh, so now, now let me be clear. I I absolutely do want to go out there to see if anybody needs help, and if they need help, we should help them. But I'll be honest, I also have uh, have a couple of contract deals with some of the folks out in those packs where I, I was supposed to get the best of their harvest when they brought it in. And so I kind of want to make sure nothing's if messing that if up. If they're magically controlled, they can't provide what the what they're contracted for. So that yeah. That's so I kind of have that interest as well but i mean of course i don't want people to be magically controlled and kill people or hurting people that's awful indeed pretty small so uh, uh she she walks and uh walks you to and certainly she has a cart that uh you know when unloaded uh is is big enough for kind of everyone to to ride uh and a couple pair of horses and uh um so shall shall we head out at once? Uh, we'll we'll say that De Deli did go ahead and give you like a a sort of a brief sketched map. Like it's it's not complicated. She just draws it sort of quickly. Um, but uh, uh, Lady Dre looks at that and says, "Oh yeah, I know just where that is." Awesome. Yep. Excellent. Um, so as you are uh, getting ready to leave, uh, another person comes. And uh, and approaches you. And this is handout Tungsten Ward. Uh, I should have just shared that with you. Yep. And so Tungsten yep. Ward is uh, small of stature and uh, but uh, approaches um, with a, a, a soft voice and uh, uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, I think uh, those of you who had paid extra attention to the uh, to like all of the you know learning about the uh, like the the place uh, realize uh, that they are wearing uh, proclaimers robes. They are one of the uh -huh. proclaimers. Of, um, and uh, let's see. Uh, they they approach and just say. Uh, Greetings, all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Proclaimer Ward. I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know if you are familiar with what proclaimers do, but I am uh, in under the interest of the covenant, uh, researching magical manifestations across God's breath that I believe might be uh, signs of the God's power or challenges to it. Uh, having seen some of what transpired here today, I would like to accompany you on your expedition. I trust that will be acceptable. That's reasonable. That's I think reasonable. that's reasonable. Yeah. yeah. 
I want to. I have no. I have no objections to someone of of such a stature and uh, power within the community accompanying us. We'd be honored. I would. I would like to. I kind of want to see if he's being on the up and up. Yeah. Uh, this this character does use they them pronouns, although. Oh, thank uh, you. So, so I'm just I'm just saying you wouldn't have had any reason to know, but now you do. Uh, <laughs> so you want to make an insight check, uh, Axel? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Eighteen. Uh, they seem to be a very straight shooter. They they are telling you exactly what they want. Mm. Um, well. But you get the impression from them too that they are. Uh, the sort of uh, relaxed demeanor, you get the impression that this is someone who is good at getting what they want and used to that. But it does not mean that they are not telling you exactly the truth of what they intend here and what they're trying to do. Okay. And uh, Exodus is kind of like, well, the more the merrier, especially seeing as we don't know this area very well, as we just arrived. Well, uh, wonderful then. I, I think having uh, accomplished adventurers who can protect themselves will serve us well as we venture into the rattle and I can provide any uh, history or local context that might be necessary. I would appreciate that. That would be most uh, useful for our adventure. Splendid. If, in fact, this discovery is something of significant import. We may create a verse of the awakening song for it. And should that happen, I will assure you that each of your names shall be uh, incorporated prominently. Well, that's quite the honor. Uh, when uh, they mentioned the awakening song, um, anyone who uh, f feels that they listened carefully enough to it can make a, a history check with advantage. I think I did. I, that's what I was just doing. Basically, it was the only thing I was doing was. Hey, so I I made a check. Twenty one. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I think Xenophon. Yeah. You. You. There's something you're remembering. It's like what was it? Oh, I can't quite remember. Yeah. But but Dianok with a twenty one. Uh, it suddenly occurs to you, there was actually, you know, uh, the Aunt Deli told you about, uh, you know, Kiana had having lost her friend at Cradle Lace Lake. And you realize there's a verse about Cradle Lace Lake and about it supposedly being dangerous and, and haunted. And there's even a line in it about uh, the tragic drowning of a child named Cully. Huh. Uh. Sounds, there was someone, there was a person that I heard about the Cradle Lace Lake. Uh, Lady Dre is like, I assume we can have this conversation moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I fear we were. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know. I'm just introducing that so to establish that that's what's happening is you're riding out yeah. of town now uh -huh. while we have this conversation. Uh, and uh, and Tungsten Ward says uh, that's absolutely correct. And they they proceed to just sing that verse. Um, very clearly in a, in a, in quite a nice voice. And, uh, sure enough, what you learn about the, hang on, I have to open up the other thing about that. Um, the, what you were, don't look at that. Um, uh, the, the verse in total, like hearing it carefully in the new context, uh, there was once a, uh, a, a thriving but isolated farm there, but then a terrible sinkhole under, uh, opened underneath the farmhouse and then flooded. And so the story goes um, that the res house's residents tried to escape, but the farm's owner, desperate to keep her family with her, uh, dragged them back into the house. And, uh, and supposedly that's the, the origin of it being haunted. But that aspect of it is presented in the song more as this is what people say. But the verse nonetheless points out that several tragedies have befallen people who come near Cradle Lace Lake. Um, as if the buried dead sought to add to their number. 
and and one of those mentioned is uh, a young man named Cully tragically vanished into the water in front of his best friend. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, Tungsten Ward, uh, Proclaimer Ward, does say, uh, now my understanding is that the pact we are traveling to is not precisely right near that lake, but uh, does seem sort of a uh, dark tiding if it is this young woman that we are investigating. Yes. I wouldn't think so many connections would be a coincidence. Well, perhaps we shall find out. Uh, so, as you uh, get underway, uh, the journey from Promise leads north through the ribbon, where clustered farmhouses dot the dark red ground between stands of scattered woods. Eventually, the road dwindles to a track. The stands of trees grow denser, and the farms fewer and farther between as you near the lands called the Rattle. Uh, who feels like they would be up for a nature check? Always. I think Klaus would give it a try. She's not very good at it, but she'd try. Yeah. So this would be if you are studying the farms and other such things that you pass. Okay. Oh yeah. I, I think uh, I think uh, Fouts will help Dianoc. Okay. But not try to make the not try to make the role herself. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that nature? Twenty three. There you go. Uh, you definitely notice that uh, very much in line with some of the more recent verses of the Awakening song. Uh, it seems like a lot. Many of the farms on the ribbon are are uh, suffering compared to previous yields. Uh, many of the uh, fields seem uh, touched by blight. Animals are thin. Hmm. I, wonder if there, I wonder if there's some sort of connection. Uh, Lady Dre A blight says, upon the land? Well, I, I, I don't know that there's not a connection, but I can tell you that agriculture in the region has been deteriorating for years, and it's why we have so many people moving out to the rattle now. Because it's, it's hazardous out there, but, you know, people are trying to go where they can actually grow, if you follow me. Has, has, is the entire of the ribbon been affected by reduced crop yields, or just regions of it? Well, I mean, it seems like it's the entire ribbon, as far as we can tell. And uh, Proclaimer Ward says, there are those with theories about why this would be, but none of them are credible to my mind as of yet, but it is part of what I am hoping to eventually discover. So as you continue uh, moving along through, into, uh, you, you pass through the region over the period of a couple of hours, you pass through the ribbon and push into the rattle, uh, and you pass a weathered farm surrounded by crops that look somewhat healthier. And, it, and it's it's notable when you pass through the ribbon because it's clear that there is sort of an area where the soil is different from the surrounding soil. And so once you have crossed from the ribbon into the rattle, you can you can see the change in the the flora and in fact in fact this first farm that you pass passed there seems healthier already um but not everything uh is as uh promising as that might sound because as you're passing this farm growls and excited yipping resound from the fields surrounding a nearby farm the source isn't clear but from the motion of the tall crops something moves swiftly through the fields parallel to the road you see that? Yes. I I, I tap Dianoc because Dianoc is the wood elf, so he's sure. clearly the clearly the nature uh, expert. Well, so I think this is more of a perception type check. I want to yeah, I'll take a look and see if I can see what it is. Is it running like towards us or along yeah. our path? Yeah, and perception's one of my things too. Sure. Perception. Yeah. In fact, actually, uh, Canton has the highest passive perception of the group. 
So how about a how about a passive uh, or excuse me how about a perception check, uh, Kent? Then thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. So what you can see looking at the the swaying of the tops of these tall rows of uh, of of corn, let's say, uh, are is that there seem like that there are two groups moving through the fields, one pursuing the other. And you can't see what it is because you're just seeing the, the 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 moving as something is pushing through, um, but it is your impression that the first is small, like maybe a person, and whatever's chasing is bigger than that. Hmm. That Can doesn't I look good. Yeah. I'm gonna jump off the uh, jump off the uh, the, uh, the the wagon and uh, draw my halberd and run towards him. Okay. Bounce is right behind you. All right. Is everybody pursuing? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, who wants to make the survival check to try to... So as soon as you enter the crops, you can't see any further than 10 feet. You are within, like you're surrounded by these tall stalks of, uh, of corn. Um, so uh, I need a survival check for someone to try to lead the group to intercept these. Uh, I've got a plus three. Okay. Anybody better than I, that? I've got a yeah, plus I'm, four. Got a plus four. Somebody else. I got a plus four, <laughs> not me. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I can try to help you, Flounce. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need the help. Okay. Yeah, that first roll was not very good. That's an eight. Yeah. But uh, a fourteen though is sufficient that uh, you are able to. Um, uh, you are able to uh, follow the direction. Now, what were you trying to do in terms of like, there is, like I said, like a small thing being pursued by something bigger, uh, and you're hearing these growls and yips and so on. So like, where are you trying to intercept? Like, are you trying to come in between or yeah. are you trying to intercept whatever's in front? What, what are you trying to do? I come in between, uh, what's being chased and the pursuer. Okay. Uh, so yes, as you push through and find yourself suddenly in a row, you look to your left and you see uh, a, a stocky looking uh, human man. Uh, looks like he is very out of breath, but running as fast as he can. Uh, and then you look to your right and you see three massive coyotes. And when I say massive, I mean horse sized. Oh, uh, I didn't see this coming. Well, All right. now you're rolling an initiative is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, more combat. Oh, boy. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Only four for me. I am slow. Oh! <laughs> I'm real slow off the mark. Got dire coyotes. Dire coyotes. I did not okay. have that on my uh, to-do list today. Update. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are once again doing theater of the mind here, here within this, this these tall uh, rows of, uh, of corn. Uh, do we have everyone with their correct initiative on the tracker? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Boy, feast or famine over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for Canthan and Xenophon, who's got the higher decks? My guess is Canthan does, but. My decks is 12. Uh, same here. Okay. Same well, same roll same. off. You, both of you just do one more roll. Like roll a d20. Oh, I need to get on that screen. Um, I got a two. I have a 15. Okay. Well, then Xenophon's first. Uh, and then, uh, what's your dex flounce? Zero. Okay. Well then the coyote beats you, but Dianoc beats everybody. So Dianoc, uh, oh. you are up first. Oh, what do you, would you like to do? I there saw... are three of these coyotes, by the way. Oh boy. I, <laughs> Dianoc. Is going to uh, cast mage armor on themselves. Okay. Uh, because that is that is scary. Yeah. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. 
and that also charges their arcane ward. Okay. And uh, um, I don't think I really have a bonus action, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of move back behind uh, behind Flounce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, five foot ten wood elf kind of cowering behind me. <laughs> the small yeah, bunny. That's, actually, small, that's bunny actually a very good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think what happens then is that um, uh, it is the coyotes next. And although they were pursuing an old farmer, hey, there's suddenly new targets in front of them. Um, I think that uh, two of them are going to go for Flounce and one of them for Exel, who was kind of also leading otherwise before uh, Dianoc hid. And so uh, they are running through. The first one is uh, going to try to bite you, uh, Flounce, getting a, a 20 to hit. Yep, that hits. Uh, that Please uh, take 14 piercing damage mm. and make a strength saving throw for me. Oh. Uh that's a lot. 13. Mm. 13. That is a success. You are not knocked prone. Okay. Uh, however, because of pack tactics, the second one coming in to attack is now going to have advantage. Okay. Um, and that's a 19 to hit. That'll hit. So that's another 11 piercing damage. Mm. Are, are you still up? I'm still up. Please make another strength saving throw for me. That is a 24. You are once again able to maintain uh, your prone status. <laughs> so this very small herringon has just gotten chomped <laughs> by two horse-sized coyotes who are both trying to do the thing to try to pull you prone. And yet somehow this tiny <laughs> bunny is, uh, is resisting the attempt, uh, just I... planting her feet. The image in my head is like they grab and 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 uh, 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 thrash their head and throw you in the air and you just land on your feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the third coyote is going to attack you, Exel, um, and only gets a nine to hit. So <laughs> uh, Flounce got all the the luck. <laughs> That's um, good, uh... Oh, no, excuse me. No, I'm sorry. It should have pack tactics because it's, uh, hang on. Let's see. Wait, let me, um, if at least one of the coyotes allies is within five feet. Yeah. 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 Cause they're all kind of, you're all clumped together at this point. Right. Yeah. So that means it's a 21 to hit. That'll hit. Nine piercing damage and please make the strength saving throw. All righty. Is it nine? Yeah. That hurt. I'm not good at strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, that's, a, oh, did it wrong? Well, it hasn't shown up on the, in roll 20 yet. Anyway. Okay. Let's try it again. That's a 12. Uh, 12. Yeah. So a 12 is not enough. They yank you off your feet and you are prone but there are no I, others to attack you at the moment. I'm right. sorry. The, the seven foot rabbit got knocked to the ground. And Indeed. Here's little tiny and little bunny did not. <laughs> uh, but so that makes it your turn flounce. Um, you're not grappled or anything, despite the, no. uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the attempt to pull you prone. So, but it is now your turn. There I'm... are three of these things right all around you. Okay. I am going to invoke giant's might. Yeah. As a bonus action, I am going from uh, small to large. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to unsheath my glaive. <laughs> so is, is it a bonus action to do that? It um, is. It is a bonus action to. All right. uh, yeah. To do that. Um, so here's a question. It's got to be the first time anyone else has seen this happen, right? Yeah. This is the first time I've ever done it. Yeah. So you look at her and she's like, this is awesome! Yeah, so literally, the, so Flounce was small before, so she's like, what, like three feet tall? Now yeah. she's 12 feet tall. 
And I, yeah, I think that uh, like some of the, even some of these horse-sized coyotes are suddenly going, oh. (laughs) So uh, what else would you like to do, Flounce? Uh, I will turn to my party and say, if anybody could hit me with some healing spells, I would be very grateful. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> I'm the healer in this group. God help I'm us. going to attack, uh, with my glaive, uh, the, one of the coyotes that bit me. Yeah. Um, I think it's also hilarious incidentally that, um, the glaive, which is ridiculously big when you're small is now kind of like, seems like a small two-handed weapon for your current size. <laughs> you can see over the tops of the corn too. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead and make your attack. Yeah, I was I was actually very close to invoking this when we jumped out of the thing just so that I could see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so attack. Oh no, that's an eight. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately that's gonna miss it. It jumps out of the way. Okay. You're just not used to it. It's it's mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. suddenly so small. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, that'll be me. Mm-hmm. All right, Axel, your turn. You are prone to start. So right. So I will stand up. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, since the rabbits seem to be full of uh, things today. Uh, <laughs> you now you all now get um something else astonishing you see exel mumble something and then he's covered in a eerie almost grayish like sickening light and then you start seeing his fur and skin draw in and kind of sloth off so he starts looking like an undead and let's see here. what in the world is this? <laughs> and so he has now invoked his dread form, All and right. I gain eight temporary hit points, thankfully. I think it should actually be nine because you get it's one d ten plus one. I think is what. Oh, okay. But is yeah. it? But it's. Uh, but that that's for on? your temporary hit points. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then he will. He will use, what is it? Where's the tempo? Uh, yeah, he will use chill touch on okay. the on the coyote in front of him. All right, go ahead and make your attack. Uh, uh, 12. A 12, unfortunately, is not enough. You end up with just kind of gra- like a, a handful of uh, loose fur. Mm. These coyotes are a little bit mangy. <laughs> you yes. end up with just like, ugh, ugh. Although he kind of looks mangy like them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and you have to hit for them to be the, get, yeah. make the frightened jump, yeah. right? Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, Canthan. So Canthan is going to do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just pulling out all the stops today. Mm-hmm. This is I'm awesome. I'm going <laughs> to, uh, as, as a bonus, bonus action, I'm invoking Fighting Spirit, mm-hmm. which gives me five temporary hit points. And gives me advantage on weapon attacks until the end of the turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was g- planning on running over to Flounce and kind of standing over her to protect her, but that plan has kind of <laughs> gone, out, yeah. gone out the window. But I'm definitely going to run over and see if I can draw aggro from one of those uh, sure yeah. one of those uh, 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 coyotes mm-hmm. and smack it with my halberd. All right. Oh! Well, you know, you guys are just having some bad attack rolls here. <laughs> Holy cow. Like that's, that's the third eight in a row. Yeah. Wow. Like you all got eight. Flounce got an eight. And then... oh, no. I got an eight. Well, the eight was well, your your eight was the D10 points. for your temporary hit points. So you got a twelve oh. for your oh. chill touch, but then another eight. So yeah, this is uh I think you have its attention, but you didn't successfully hurt it. Yeah. So uh that's that's my turn. Okay. Xenophon. Okay, so I'm going to run over to the now giant flounce mm-hmm. and press my hand against uh, her flank because now she's well, double not, my Not height. the little cotton ball tail? <laughs> right. <laughs> the big I shall, I shall heal, heal thee, I say. And so, oh, that's 
four hit points on oh, the wounds. Oh my God. God. <laughs> but then as a bonus action, I'm going to um, cast Bardic Inspiration on her, and I'm going to say, Flounce, you are now big and tall. Take some healing and be our wall. So you get a Bardic Inspiration die, Flounce. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. We're it's back not, up. A, not one she can use on armor class, though, is it? No, no. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not on her armor class, but yeah. Oh. Saving throw, uh, building a tricks, attack rolls, or saving right. throws. Yeah, so, but, yeah. Uh, so we're back up at the top of initiative with Dianark. Okay, so Dianark is a really startled by both the things happening. Mm -hmm. And it's going to kind of peek through, peek between Flounce's legs since that's actually now a thing that can be done and uh, toss a bubble of acid at the at the two that are I uh, um I uh, herring her okay and it, and, and so do they both make saving check. throws or how yeah, does that work save. okay uh, so e there's two two of them make deck saves yes. is that right okay uh, so, uh, the first one, well, they both fail. That's an eight and a six. Yay. They both take <laughs> one damage each. Oh, one damage each. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, this isn't going great yet, you guys. So, <laughs> no, no, no. um, uh, yeah. So I think, uh, uh, oh. one of those is gonna go after you, uh, now, Dianak. Oh, no. Uh, well, you just threw a bubble of acid at it. What do you want? Yeah. 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 It's, uh... I'm just hoping they, when they attack me, they roll low. Okay, well, it gets a 15. <laughs> that uh, is my, oh, wait, uh, wait. Major three. armor gives a 5? Plus 3. 13. So, that is my AC. Okay, 15. so it does still hit, and so that's 9 piercing. And I uh, need the strength saving throw. Oh, uh, um, strength save? Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> Natural one. Okay, Ooh. you are pulled prone by that coyote. Um, and the, uh, the kind of shimmering uh, uh, field that went around, around Dianoc just shatters hmm. with that. Uh, Kanthan, you have a 20, dirty 20 coming towards you. Oh, that hits. So that's 11 piercing, and I need the saving throw, strength saving throw. I uh, only made a 10. Okay, so you are also pulled off your feet. How much damage? 11. 11. Uh, and then Flounce, you, you get one more. That you know okay. The others have pulled a couple off you, but you're getting so big all of a sudden, um, and yeah. Axel making themselves considerably less appetizing um <laughs> uh but that is only even with advantage they only got a seven that time so okay uh, speaking of advantage i forgot to roll with advantage on my halberd last oh okay time. yeah go ahead and re-roll that then 14 a 14 does hit okay eight slashing damage okay uh, well we'll i'll go ahead and say that was one of the same ones they got hit with the one one point of acid mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, that um, that slashed it, and it 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 yelped, and it's bleeding, but it's still kind of doing okay for now. Uh, okay, uh, so that was the coyotes. Uh, Flounce, it's your turn now. All right, bonus section, uh, second wind. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because my Eight. healing didn't help. <laughs> well, I mean, it helped a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right, now that I've got double digits in hit points. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also going to uh, try this thing again with the glaive. Mm -hmm. And that is a flat 10. Yeah, like, 10 is not good I need something bigger. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> the glaive, actually, the glaive is supposed to grow with me, so this oh, okay, be well, just too massive. <laughs> yeah. Next time, use yeah. your inspiration die. No, oh, yeah, I, that's I, right. How much? Oh yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Time. Roll, yeah. roll. It's a d6, I think. It's a d6. Yeah, okay. roll a d6 and see if that'll get you there. Fifty-fifty chance, I think. Uh, it's thirteen. Ah, oh, just under. 
Oh. Under, just under. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, Sorry. no. Um, but uh, that makes it uh, Axel's turn now. All righty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... Hmm. That... Yeah, that's just a saving throw. It's not an attack roll. Damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was trying to see if I could do something with Arms of Hadar, but it's not an attack roll. Mm -hmm. It's a saving throw. But it will let me hit all of them. Mm -hmm. So I will, as a bonus action, use my bunny hop, since, mm -hmm. I, have, since I have my full movement now, yeah. to hop, to jump behind the three um coyotes okay and i will then cast arms of hadar okay what does this look like <laughs> um you see a very sickly undead looking rabbit jump behind them and that same sickly glow erupts from around him you even see some of the crops wither because it's necrotic energy mm -hmm. uh and then these giant black tendrils that also look very, you know, mummified and, and flesh falling off, <laughs> start slamming into the three uh, coyotes. All right. Do they make saving throws? What's going on there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> DC 13 strength checks. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one gets a 22. Then 14. And a 17. Right, so they will take half damage, but no other effects. So. Okay. Does that uh, do your but your form of fright form of dread thing only is only with an attack roll that hits? Yeah, that's yeah. what you were checking earlier. Okay. Yep, yep. So they they're taking half of seven. Yep. All right. So three points. All right. Okay. Uh, they certainly, they're sur surrounded now though. So that you, you've regained their attention. <laughs> uh, can then, what are you doing? I'm going to use my fighting spirit once again. Mm -hmm. Um, I imagine that what, what that looks like is that he just kind of takes, takes a martial stance and a little glint of light appears on his weapon and a ching yeah. sound. Love it. Um, do you do the do the 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 thing where you j just well you have your you have your weapon out already. I was just yeah. going to say do the thing where you just flick use your thumb to flick the samurai sword out of the hilt just a little bit, <laughs> just getting it ready to suddenly draw right. You know that whole thing. Anyway, yeah. uh, so but you stand up too. I would imagine, right? Yep, and yeah. stand up and oh, there you go. Twenty four to hit. Twenty four will hit. And uh, 13 slashing damage. The same one that you were doing before? Same one I was hitting before, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that is... Yeah, so that one is is pretty significantly bloodied now. It, does, it looks like it is considering maybe running, but it's not quite there yet. Like, it, it's, it's certainly significantly injured, though. All right. Uh, anything else for your turn? Uh, no, that's my bonus and my action. Okay, Xenophon. All right, I'm I'm torn between trying to heal Flans and trying to hurt these things. Um, not that I'm a, in any way near mainline flyer. But, um, mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, I, I, I'm just going to mock that one that's injured that uh, Canton's dealing with. Maybe we can okay. take it down. So yeah. ambitious mockery. It. Um, hear my words, biting and true. Your teeth, your breath also smells too. <laughs> I always thought you were about to say smells like poo. Uh, wisdom save. Wisdom save. Uh, that's an eighteen. Oh, yeah, that, so he saves. So yeah, he so, gets um. Yeah, nothing happens to him. Then. Cantrip. Oh. Yeah, cantrip. Um. Yep. Um. I think that's it for. Me. Well, I, no. actually, I could do somebody else. Uh, yeah, an inspiration die. Um. Let's give it to. Let's give one to Canthen. Canthen. Okay. Canthen, Kanth you're going to be inspired thusly. Hear me and listen now, Canthen. Canthen can do great deeds. <laughs> okay. I love this. Canthen can. Canthen can. I love you so much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Writing Ixel, though, so it's difficult. I'll just have you know. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, my stupid windows. You know that thing that goes in the system tray that, like, pops up, like, weird random news headlines and stuff is if you mouse over it? Yeah, I hate that, that thing. Like, How it's, it's, say, it's well, doing that, but it's it's stuck. It Like, it, it's stuck on there. Like, it won't go away. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, like, it popped up, but now it, it won't drop away yeah. again. So it's blocking part of my screen. Yay, Windows. Uh, hang on just a second. I got it. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Windows, for helping. What? The hell? <laughs> like, and it's like, I can't even, like, I can't click on it or anything. It's not like it's. It's just, ugh, what a pain in the butt. Okay, well, I'm going to have to rely on you guys to tell me what the dice rolls are right now because I can't see them. Uh, oh, no. Um, okay. Yeah, well, that's... we've been doing that anyways. Yeah, we are reliable and trustworthy. That, that is so <laughs> irritating. Um, what what is that thing called? Like, like that's the notifications panel. Yeah. Well, no, like just the it's like sh oh, hang on, hang on. News and interests. There we go. Turn well turned off. Open on hover, but can't uh it's it, like it's it i i turned it off so it won't do that anymore but it doesn't it's whatever's made it like stick is not going away so that's annoying but all right so in any case uh where were we <laughs> sorry about that where were we uh be would be the start of dnox's turn right so Xenophon oh went. yes Xenophon just went so dnox yep. turn again yeah so uh dnox has this uh, very large creature out over them. And so I'm going to take one, just go whoop, 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 and poke it between the eyes <laughs> and cast uh, hideous laughter. OK. Uh, uh, hopefully it's got an intelligence greater than four. So intelligence save? Uh, oh, wait. Well, oh, wait. So it, has, it has to be an intelligence greater than four. Unfortunately, it does not. Um, but I'll I'll let you choose something else if you want. Well, no, I'm gonna do and then just like, uh oh, and just kind of scramble up and like, uh, <laughs> and yeah, that's that's the turn because I <laughs> I don't have a really have a bonus action that's useful. Mm -hmm. I I cannot deal with this. Hang on, I'm gonna have to adjust my little window here a little bit because I can't deal with not being able to see that part of the screen. So I'm having to. Adjust the size here just a second. We'll be just a moment. Yep. I'll, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> uh, Dinox turn. So you 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 chose you wanted to do that spell anyway, even though you know yeah. it won't work. Okay. Uh, oh, well, I I. Wouldn't... What I'm allowing is that you could have figured out that it wouldn't work without. You could have realized I, that it wouldn't. Yeah, I think uh, it's learning experience. Fair so. enough. Okay. All right. So uh, in any case, then that makes it uh, the coyote's turn. Uh, so let's see. I think we're still, we're going to get one for Axel, another for Flounce again, and uh, and another one definitely for um, uh, Canthan, for sure. In fact, actually, I think two, I, I take that back. We're getting one for Axel and two for Canthan this time because Canthan is the one that's, hurting them the most at the moment. Um, yeah. uh, all right. So uh, first two for Canthan. It's a 24 and an 18. Both of those are going to hit. OK, so uh, prepare to take a total of 24 piercing damage. Uh -oh. And two uh, straight saving am... thrusts. Yeah, I don't need to make the saving throws. Okay. I'm down. Okay. Oh, crap. Crap, yeah. crap, 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 crap. So two that of was... them team up on Canthan and uh, immediately are savaging him. Uh, and then one is attacking Axel. And that's going to be... Um, I'm saying that one doesn't get advantage, but it's still got a 23 uh, to hit. So that's another 13 piercing damage for you, Axel. And uh, I need the saving throw again. Ouch. Oof. 
That is an eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you are once again pulled off your feet prone. Is it 13? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yes. Flounce. All right. Let's see if I can do a thing. Right. That is better than the thing that I have done before. Yeah. So two of the coyotes are still pretty good. I've only taken a little bit of damage. One of them is pretty hurt. Okay. Um, let's see if I can do the one that's pretty hurt. Okay. I'm going to hit it with my glaive. Ugh, this is not working. Wow. It's an 11. You're just oh having the God. worst rolls. Dang. No. Yeah, so... Uh, see, see last, last time we played, we were getting all of these really, really spectacular mm -hmm, rolls, mm -hmm. so I expected something like this to yeah. happen. So <laughs> these, these coyotes are just extremely agile. They're just jumping and dodging and, you know, ducking out of the way uh, of your swings. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge? All of those. Uh, <laughs> so that was Flounce. Um, uh, Axel, it's your turn. <sighs> he is going to stand up yet again. Mm -hmm. And um, he will. Arms of Hadar, is that, does that something that's concentration? No, it's, that's, that's it's a one it, turn. That was just a one oh, turn. Oh, one turn. turn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And hmm, I'm not using a weapon, so that one won't work. Um, then I will go with a chill touch on the one attacking me. Okay. Another 24. That'll hit. Ah. There we go. So now on a hit, he will take one, he will take one D8 necrotic damage. Okay, seven. And nice. And he will have to make a wisdom save, DC 13. Okay. Uh, it's a 17, so it does save. Well, he's uh, not, he's not still not afraid. But yep, still, that I mean, that's, you know, like, that's, you know, other than uh, Kanthan had a couple of good hits, but other than that, that's like, <laughs> one of the, you're now in second place yeah. for most damage done. Uh, <laughs> and so, so, and uh, as a bonus action, I will then use my bunny hop yet again, because uh, mm -hmm. it does not provoke an attack of opportunity, to um, hop 15 feet or 10 feet away from the... Uh, Thing I'm a bit. Matter of fact, I will. Your visibility is only ten feet right now, by the way, because yeah. of the tall corn. Um, mm. yeah. Then I will. I will. I'll just do it. Uh, ten feet again. Uh, uh I want to go back or into the fray. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll go. I'll do. I'll go back. I'll. I'll go back. I'll jump back ten feet away from the the coyote, and that is, I think, that's the last hop I can use too. That is. Do, 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 do. So yeah, that is the second use of my bunny hop, mm -hmm. and I'm out. So I, but I did go. I'm going to go ten feet away from the coyote in front of me. Okay. All right, Kanthan is uh, is down. So please make a a death saving throw. Yeah, uh, unnatural twenty. Unnatural <laughs> uh, twenty. Can you use bardic inspiration on a death save? I don't think so. Okay, it's not. It is not a uh, save. It is not an ability attack or save. Oh, okay. Well, it's kind of a save, but it it I don't I don't think it counts for that. But a sixteen is a success regardless. Okay. Uh, so Xenophon, it's your turn. Okay. So so can I touch Canthan with that coyote there, or is the coyote? Going yeah, to I think I I, th I think so. I mean, you're potentially putting yourself in melee range of the coyote. Yeah. Well, but, you get, yeah, that's you fine. But I don't know if it's going to get a yeah attack of opportunity. So. No. Okay, so I'm going to only if you duck, try to back away again. I'm going to duck into uh, 
to where Canthan is lying down. Let us heal Canthan and make him strong. You need to fight them ere too long, and I'll cast Cure Wounds on you, Canthan. All right. Okay. And I get you get seven hit points. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's that's good. That's good. You know, not being dead is good. Mm -hmm. Not being dead is good. <laughs> All right. That puts us back up to Dianoc. Okay. Well, since uh, magic's not doing doing any helpful, Dianoc is going to pull out uh, their short sword and just stab at the one that is, I, uh, I, uh, the one that is threatening or that could possibly be threatening both well, Canton and. So bear in mind, there is one that is extremely wounded and two and one that's a little bit wounded and one that's not hurt, very hurt at all. Okay, can I go after the one that's extremely wounded? Yes. A uh, 16. A 16 hits. Hurrah. Yay. The wizard is putting Four. the rest of you. Three <laughs> damage. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. how this goes today. Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, but that one was pretty hurt already. Uh, so uh, what actually happens is that uh, that one decides, you know what, I've had enough of this. And so that one is actually turning to run. Is anyone making an opportunity attack or are you just going to let it go? Uh, I'll try. I'm on the ground, so it's probably not a great... <laughs> you can make the attack with disadvantage. I, yeah. I think I'm right there, so I'll, make a, I'll try too. Not that I'm a good fighter. I'm a terrible fighter, actually. Oh, yeah, and completely misses. <laughs> yeah, I'm not okay. even cool. Yeah. I might as well. It's, 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 it's... Wow, Xenophon, Xenophon gets a crit with his long story. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be a grand total of looks like... Uh, were you? I, I don't think you were doing. Were, were you using it two-handed? Um, yeah. I don't have a shield, so yes. Yeah. So it looks like four. Yeah. Four damage <laughs> to that one. Uh, yeah. It is not enough to kill it. Um, <laughs> Thirteen with disadvantage for Canthan uh, from prone is not enough to yeah. hit either, and that one disappears into the uh, corn. Into the corn. Uh, uh, the one that is closest to where Canthan is lying prone is going to try to drag him away. So okay. once again, opportunity attacks can be made, except that most everyone did that already. Yeah. Uh, uh, so no, Dianoc's going to yeah? take an opportunity attack. Mm -hmm. and you can't have him. <laughs> I'll try one with <laughs> one of my daggers. Okay. Eight. Yeah. A 19. A 19 will hit. Uh, so he will take five points of piercing damage and have to make a wisdom save. Okay. Um, oh, I think being frightened of you is not going to change his actions very much. Right. Uh, uh, well, you know, he'll be at disadvantage and be frightened just generally. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, wisdom save, 18. They're, I mean, they're, they're yeah, actually so. pretty good with wisdom. They're like hunters, right? You know. Right. Is it um, trying to grapple me? Is that why how it's trying to take me? Away? Um, yeah. I guess it. I guess I do need to have it make that grapple check. So it is doing yeah. that. So well, uh, it's with my athletics, right? Yeah. So let's see. It's making a. Uh... And bardic inspiration. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> let's see. Is it? No. Oh, there we go. So it got a 13 is what you're trying to beat as it tries to grapple you. And I got a okay, you roll out of the way. And so I think then um, uh, it it is uh, not willing to completely flee yet, um, but it, it, it was ready to try, but uh, it's not going to leave. It's not ready to leave without a prize yet. Um, and then the third one is just still, you know, still doing its thing. So I think it's going to try to attack Plounce again. Okay. And that's going to come up in a second, and I'll say what it is. It's only a 10 to hit that time. Nope. Snaps at you, and you are able to evade. Uh, all right, Fonce, it's your turn. Okay. Only two left on the field. One of them looked like it was just about to try to drag Canthan away. Yeah, that's the one I'm going after. We'll mm -hmm. see if I can hit that one. Mm-hmm. 
And that's a 13. 13 oh. is just short. And it was an eight on the die. And yeah, you have a plus, <laughs> plus five, five. So you, you haven't rolled over a nine yet. Ooh. Yeah. Um, um, and I don't have any bonus actions that I can use. Mm -hmm. um, well, right you know, now. perhaps we can chalk this up to your, as cool as it is, you're still not used to being this big. Yeah. <laughs> trust me, trust me. Getting bigger makes everything awkward. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, Excel. Um, let's see. I'm going to do, I'll do chill touch on the one, um, on the fresh one that is not being attacked by multiple people trying to drag our friend away. Okay. Let's see here. 19. That hits. And that is six necrotic damage okay. and a wisdom save. Wisdom save. Um, see if that'll come up. Yeah, dirty 20 on that save. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, the, the, the wolves are rolling fine. So I don't know what's the problem with the rest of you. Yeah. Roll 20 does not, does not like us. Yeah. So, uh, I can't then. <laughs> All right, get up off my duff. Uh huh. Uh, and time to give them some gruff. Take a bonus action for a second wind. Oh! <laughs> the uh, minimum. Double but digits. Well, four, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might be able to survive one of their attacks if they're a little low. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's only. There, you know, well, you try, to, so try to. Yeah. Try I'm going to gonna try and smack that one that was trying to get me. Mm -hmm. 24. There you go. There you go. 10 points of slashing damage. All right. Uh, it looks extremely ready to try to run away, but maybe not quite yet. It's it's still really, it's it's growling at you and it's like slobber coming out of its jaws. It looks pretty hungry. They weren't kidding when they said yeah, it was but, awesome. but it's substantially wounded now for sure. Yeah, well, uh, that's my turn. Yeah, all right, Xenophon. All right, I'm gonna look at that one that took away, that's trying to, that tried to drag away can't then his wound is, hear mm -hmm. my words, my story to sell, your fleas are as ugly as well. You know, <laughs> this is mockery yet. All right, oh, wisdom save again, Wisdom right? save. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that's a 14. Um, with some 13, so it's safe. It, yeah, okay, it does save. It. Yeah, it does save. Uh, Dang it. All right. Sorry. Uh, Dianoc. Okay. Gonna go after the one that's on the edge of fleeing and stab at it. Mm -hmm. 16. 16 hits. <laughs> Three damage again. All right. Well, you know what? You know, every little bit. You're helps. still doing it. Yeah. 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 You're still doing damage. Dude. <laughs> yeah, you're doing better than that. Well, and in fact, once again, uh, I think all of you, the rest of you are going to have to start getting superstitious about this because every time what happens is, uh, oh, um, hang on. My, uh, give me a moment here. My, uh, I've got a audacity issue and then Zoom is. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What happened? Oh. Oh. Um, okay. My oh. Zoom uh, briefly dropped, but I think here. Let's yeah, see. You're, you're we back. can hear you. Uh, yeah. I well, it's. Well. Um, let me figure out what's processing. A lot of my programs are kind of. It's probably all tied to the fact that I'm currently experiencing some other Windows issue with that news and interests not going away. So let's see if I can. Uh, get it to come back to where it needs to be here because I can't see my roll 20 right now. But uh, as I was just saying, what's happening with uh, uh, twice now, these vicious coyotes have taken these substantial hits from others. And then as soon as the wizard comes up and points, pokes them uh, with the short sword, they, they run away. So that one is running again also. Um, hey, I don't know if... Oh no, hang on. Uh, oh no. Yeah, I, I think this is, uh, 
you know what? I think I might have to try to, um, I, I might have to try, try to, uh, do a, a, a restart and let's, let's like take a temporary pause. I don't actually even know for sure that the stream is still going cause I can't see my Chrome right now. Um, uh, I think it does look like it's still streaming, but, uh, please everyone, if we'll, uh, bear with me for just yeah. a moment, I'm going to have to I told to the chat to stand by. Yeah. So, I uh, should be able to resume before too long here. Yep. All right. so, yeah. I think I'm going to need to do like a full reboot here. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, Twitch chat. Can... <laughs> um, I'm like my X split. I I'm trying to like tell it to stop streaming and it's like not responding. Well, how about I, how about I, uh, well, waiting for that, I, uh, I saw a thing. What would your character's uh, idle animation be in a, if this was like a video game? All right, I'm gonna <laughs> drop out of the Zoom because I'm gonna have to hard boot here. Okay. 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 All right. um, idle animation. 